Tactical Pad is a fantastic resource for coaches of almost any sport. Uh, we're using it for football, but it's good for basketball, hockey, whatever it might be. All we're going to do is run through a short tutorial on some of the key parts of it, um, how to use it and how to make the most out of it for your team. This video is in no way sponsored by Tactical Pad. We just recognize that it's a great uh, resource for coaches and wanted to bring a little bit of education about how to use it. Uh, hand in hand with that is this little bad boy. Um, fantastic piece of kit if you're going to be using this. Tactical Pad is great on the PC, but it needs a premium subscription or you can only use it for a set period. However, if we're using it on the iPad, we can use one of these uh, and we can use it for completely free um, without some of the added features of the premium package. Um, so all this is a little chubby stylus on one end um, and a sort of more intricate one on the other side. If you've got an Apple Pencil or anything like that, it will work just as well. So uh, we'll leave a link to this in the bottom um, and we'll link in Tactical Pad as well. So you can go and check it out. Let's have a look. So when you open Tactical Pad then, you will get a short loading screen followed by a login prompt. Now what you can do is you can just skip this. If you do want to save things and you're going to go for the premium version, then absolutely you can log in, you can put your details in there. Um, and all we do, is, so we're left with a blank screen here. When you go out of the app and come back in, it will have your previous project if you've not deleted it. And what we can do, if we've got the premium version this is, we can open up a new project nice and simple on the bottom toolbar um, it's a great little file plan that they've got really sort of user friendly and we can save things in there as well nice and simple if we go into the settings so this is the main menu that we're going through now so we've got two key menus which is our sort of menu our high level menu our strategic kind of menu and then we've got our tools which is when we come down to the sort of detail of it if we go into the settings then, we go into the account and you can see your account details there. You can subscribe if you want to, to the premium features. And we'll go back into the normal settings. We've got a couple of different options here. We can change the window. Um, so if we have a look at that, it just makes it a little bit cleaner if we're building a drill, um, just a little bit more user friendly sometimes. Um, and it's a great little way to set your screen up. So we'll put that back just for the benefits of this so you can see what we're doing. And we've got loads of different animation uh, selections as well. What we'll do is we'll just put define ball possession on. This is a great one because it highlights the player that's on the ball and makes it nice and easy to see. Uh, what you can do as well is remove the watermark, but this is a premium feature. What you'll notice is the watermark is quite subtle anyway, so it's not the end of the world. The default settings when you go into advanced then, it will normally be set at 30 frames per second. We'll just bump that up to 45 just to make it a little bit cleaner, a little bit crisper. You can change your screen resolution as well. There's loads of really good settings in there. And if we go into sports settings at the bottom, we can also change our sort of player abbreviations. Um, so if you're doing ice hockey or basketball, whatever it might be. And that is your main settings in the middle at the bottom there. What we can also do from this menu is share it. Again, this is a premium product, so um, you won't have access to that if you're just on the free version. But what you can do is screenshot things and sort of send them on. And we've got access to our two boards, but the boards, what I would say is when you go from the static board to the animated board, it will prompt you anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. If we go into fields at the bottom then, you'll see that we've got a couple of different options. If I click the little camera at the top, there's the option there to add our own images, uh, which is a fantastic little tool, and we can select whether we want to include or not include goals. We've got a full-size football pitch. We've got a blank field there as well. If we want to design our own drill, great. If we're um, doing something and we want to really focus it and we don't want all the added sort of hustle and bustle of the pitch lines, and we've got a couple of different options there uh, that we can use for rondo circles and different passing drills that we could maybe use them for. And there's loads of different setups here as well. We've got American football and rugby pitches there. There's tennis courts and volleyball courts, all sorts to, to choose from. We'll throw that back to a full 11 a side pitch. And then down the bottom, you'll three, see we've got three pitch images. So the middle one just gives us a sort of goalkeeper's perspective view. And then the other one's sort of an attacker's perspective, just looking at one half of the pitch. What we can also do is go to more of a player's perspective, which is just brings the angle down a little bit and gives us a nice little view of the pitch. 
So we'll go back to a bird's eye view of the full pitch just so that we can see. But then here then we've also got access to our 3D version, um, which is a great tool. We'll come on to that a little bit when we go through the animation phase. And lastly on this menu, we've got repositories. If we go into Tacticalpedia, go into access, there's loads and loads of resources in here. Um, there's different drills that people have uploaded, um, tactics, there's all sorts of things. Really, really good resource if you want to go in there and have a play around with some of them. We've also, within the repositories selection, we've got access to Google Drive, OneDrive and Dropbox as well, which is fantastic. Moving on then, we'll look at the teams. We've got our two team logos at the top. So we've got the Jaguars and I think this is Temu team they're called, Tema Sports. Um, so what we can do is we can change the name in here. What I would say is if you're not going to save this because you've not got the premium version, then I probably wouldn't bother changing your team whenever you design something on this. It's just not worth it because every time you reset your project, your team will reset anyway. And what we can do is we can change the colors of our strips here. We can pick whatever we want. We'll go for a little green and black or green and red. No, that's awful. We'll go green and black. Why not? Um, and we can add our own club logo there as well. What we can do also is we can change the style of the pitch. So if we click on style and then we can choose the style of the strips however we want. Um, there's loads to choose from. So you take your pick in there, find something that matches your team maybe. And we can change the appearance of the players. Do we want them to have a name under them? Do we want them to have their position on it? Or do we want images? We can upload images as well. Or there's various different styles of logos in there. So we'll go for just numbers just now, just to keep it nice and simple. And if we go into team squad on the left, we can start to play around. We can change our players' names. What I'll do just now is we'll throw a bib on some of these players, just for when we come on to animate in a little drill later on. Um, and we can add extra players if we wish. And that would just throw them on at the bottom there, as you can see. We can remove players as well, nice and easy, just using the cross on the side. If we go into advanced mode then, here we can put loads of details. We can add pictures of our players. We can change the names. We can change different models. So we can have a female or children. Uh, we can change the skin tone. Or we can add some notes and stuff as well in the four corners model. Um, we can export it as well if we wish, so we can put it to a spreadsheet or whatever it might be that we want to use. Excuse me. So lastly, within this sort of selection then is the player sizes. So let's just throw some players on the pitch here. We'll go for a little, let's set out a little seven aside to demonstrate this. There's number seven, there we go. So we'll stick them out. That's not a bad little size, but if we're going seven aside, we maybe want something a little bit more visual so we can bump that player size up using that little slide bar at the bottom. And it just makes it a little bit more visually appealing, a little bit easier for maybe the younger players to see. Or alternatively, we can drop the slide bar right down and then that gives us smaller players. If we're maybe doing a little bit of box work and it's a little bit more intricate, they're maybe a bit more true to life size-wise and we can see the detail in there a lot easier. If we want to remove players off the pitch, nice and simple, we can just tap on them and it will pull them back in. And we can drag them straight back out again if we want to put them back on the pitch. Underneath the logos, so we've got the two logos, underneath we've got a little formation bit, so we can throw them straight in, reposition the entire team, yes, and that will put our team straight into a 4-4-2 formation for us. There's loads of different tactics to choose from. Let's go for, we'll go for a 3-5-2 here. And you'll see that that throws them straight on the pitch, nice and easy. And then we can tweak it from there. We can move them around if we want. We can start putting sort of different bits on the pitch. And we'll just tap these to remove them because we don't need these. Let's just get rid of them. And we'll keep our four players. Yep, yeah, we'll keep our four players on that we use for the drill. Let's just put the size back up a little bit for the purpose of the video, um, just to make it a little bit easier. And that is it for the team menu. Nice and simple. If we go into the tools menu, then here's where we start getting into the sort of nitty gritty. So we've got a couple of different line options on the side um, with three dots in the middle. So that will basically give us three different sizes of line and we can select them as we wish. We've also got a color pot here as well. So we can change the color if we want. We can have different colored lines. And we've got a few different selections. So we pull it out. We've got a wiggly line. We've got just a sort of straight arrow, a little end point, 
or we can double it up, we can have a double line, or we can have some hatch markings as well if we maybe want to um, display the, the path of the ball or a dribble or whatever it might be. We can change that as well, so we can add these together where we have a single hatch line and stuff. So it's just a case of playing around. And if we want to get rid of them, select the little rubber and it will rub nice and easy. Really straightforward. A couple of different options we've got here. We'll get rid of that hash marking uh, and we'll deselect the arrow. Is we can do a little bit with these lines as well. We'll just pull it out, a little point in the middle and it will just... And then we've got a free hand and it's, it's sort of, you'll see the bumps there. So if I make this quite squiggly, Tactical Pad sort of cleans it up for us and makes it nice and slick, which is fantastic. And we've got a few shapes in here as well. So we've got a couple of circles there and we can add some hash markings on the middle or we can add some hatch lines around the outside. And we've got boxes in there and this last one is just a sort of point it out, it's sort, of, sort of point and hit and the, the line will go to wherever you put your marker. Nice and simple. And what we'll do here just for the purposes of our demonstration is we'll just throw a little box out there um, and we will use that later when we come onto our drill. The little pointer at the side there that you can see I've just selected just helps you move this box. Now what you can do is this box, when you put cones down, is you can sometimes catch this and move it. So what we'll do is we'll just lock that in place, double tap away from it, and that will secure it so that we don't accidentally move it later on. Into our items then, so we've got, we'll pull a football out here just now because we need a ball. And we'll start throwing some cones into place. Let's put you up there. And we'll put a cone. All the boxes here for just now is just to help aid us lining these cones out. It's just nice and simple. Because otherwise, all you're doing is you're trying to sort of guess at where's sort of the right place. And it can just get a little bit fiddly and messy. If we want to remove them, just hold down and press the little trash can on the left-hand side. And what we can do in there as well is we can change the colour of the cones if we want. So we'll go for a yellow on that one uh, and then just double tap off and that will get you back to your main bit. And what we can do now is we've set out our box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this rectangle. So if we un unpadlock it and then hit the trash can and that will get rid of it for us. And there we're left with a nice clean box in the middle. Nice and straightforward. We'll give the ball out here. And within the items then, we've got loads of different choices. We've got some hoops there uh, for some agility work. We've got mannequins, which is fantastic to work with. Uh, and we've got some goals you can see there. They're a sort of full-size goal. Uh, and we'll throw our coach out here. We've got three different types of coach there to choose from. We've got our agility ladders. And then down the bottom, we've got some more. There's a rebounder there. There's some sort of gymnastics vault things, horses, whatever you want to call them. There's some reflex balls. Um, and we can add our own things as well with a little plus at the bottom so we can start adding our own sort of items in as well. What we can do is once we've dragged an item out, if we want to duplicate it, hold on and we just press the little duplicate button at the side. Nice and simple. Double tap and we're off. If we want to get rid of these, rather than holding down nice and quick, we can just throw them off the screen. Really simple, really straightforward. And that is it. Text wise then along the bottom, what we can do is we hit the text button and then we just tap where we want to write the text and we can put some details in there. So let's say that this is a 10 meter by 10 meter box if we want to add some details for our team and then we can drag that around, we can lock it in place, uh, we can change the font, we can do loads of stuff with it. What I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to remove that because we don't know what team this is for, we don't know who the drill's for, so we don't need any sizes. And we can put notes in here as well if we are looking to save this as a project with the premium version. And again, we've got access to the Four Corners model where we can use various uh, topics to store them. Within effects then at the bottom right, our last option in this bit, we've got connectors. So we can add, let's add four connectors to these. And this is a great little tool if we want to do a little bit of shape work. And all it does is link our players together makes it nice and visual if we're trying to work on a little bit of um, unit sort of shape with our defensive unit or whatever it might be. And then all you do to remove that is just come in and hit the little trash can again. With that as well, we can add a highlight. So we hit highlights, hit add, and then we add a player. Let's go player one and we'll make him, let's make him red. And all this will do is it'll just put a little glow around that player just so that we can highlight them 
to whoever we're showing our video to. And again, you just remove it with the little trash can, nice and simple. Moving on to the animation then, we're gonna hit animation, it'll give you a little prompt, just hit yes, and that is us in the animation area of Tactical Pad. So to get us started, all we're gonna do is hit the little plus at the bottom, and that will give us an extra frame on our timeline that you can see at the bottom. We can add in here with these, uh, going forward and backwards like a fast forward and if we want to remove all we do is hit the trash can and that will remove the frame for us with a little prompt to make sure we're not going to do it by mistake. So all we're going to do then is for each frame we're going to move the ball and move the position of the player to wherever it is that we want it. So this is just a simple passing exercise just to sort of demonstrate and we can send it back the way we can move him back and all you do is you add each frame as you go one by one and you can see there, as it goes to the player, it's going to highlight them. And we've got two options here, so we can do a lofted pass or we can do a sort of ground pass as well. So we'll throw a little lofted pass in there just so you can see what that's like. And then we can move it around and manipulate it as much as we want. It's really, really good tool. Um, really good way to animate. It's so simple, so intuitive. Um, what I would say is when we're doing a couple of these bits, you will notice a few issues with the dynamics of the goalkeeper. We'll come on to that in the 3D model. And we'll do a little bit on the run in here. So if I take him and run him all the way up there, and I take him and we'll do a little short run there, you will see the difference in the speed when we come on later. Um, they will match their speed, so they will arrive at their destination at the same time. So you can have one player going really fast across the length of the pitch, and then one that's going quite slow. So just bear that in mind when you're designing your demonstrations. And what we can do then down on the bottom right is we can change the speed. So we can have a shorter speed. So if we go uh, quarter speed, um, so if we hit play there, you can see that the play is really, really slow. And it's great if you want to sort of explain some intricate details. But just bear in mind, it can be quite slow and it can be difficult to hold attention at that speed. So use it sparingly for certain activities. And then we can also go all the way up as far as four times speed. Now, what I would say with four times speed is just be mindful that it is quite quick and it's very difficult to track at some point. So if you are using this, just be wary of it. Maybe try to speed up elements and slow down others, whatever it might be you're trying to achieve. But if we go to one times and we'll just run through the drill. So there we've got our couple of little passes, nice smooth movements, um, no issues at all. And all it is, is it's just whatever we've put into the frames once we hit play. And you can see the difference in the run in there. So he's running the full length. That's in one frame. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're doing your designing your drills. If we go into our menu again and we can move to the 3D model here. Tell us about their new process. We'll have a look at that. So within the 3D part, we can use the share option again. So we've got more share options if you've got the premium. And we've got different camera angles available to us. So we can go behind the goals. We can go for a little bit of a bird's eye. Um, and this is basically like the spider cam, all different angles that we can use and get access to. If we click on the little logo, we can change our strips within here as well. And we can change what kind of players it is we want. We can have a skeleton if we want, or a little, I think it's like a Roblox man. Um, so there's loads of different settings in there. If we're going to scale at the bottom, this is quite handy. We can change the scale while we're in here as well. So what we'll do is we'll put the players up a little bit. Um, I think, is that an, yeah, that's an extra goal that we put in. So all we'll do is we just go into the animation. We'll go back to the first frame and then we delete it from the first frame. And then we can move back across into our 3D model. A little bit of troubleshooting there for us. It's fantastic. It's a great way to show you his. Uh, and then we are back into our team so we can change the scale and you can see the size of the players there is changing so we'll go for a, quite a reasonably big size uh, within the settings there we've got a few different options so we can change the stadium a uh, little foosball table on the go there if we wanted if we we're doing it for young kids maybe there's a coliseum if you wanted uh, there's some more technical details you can change the the maximum speed of the players you get really intricate and then i think this is the new so this is the 8-bit model that it was advertising a second ago so it's like something out of FIFA 96, which may be a little bit of fun for the younger ones if you wanted to try that. We'll pull that off just now. Uh, yeah, so there's loads of settings in there. You can do changes for each team. We've obviously, we've not got any of the Jaguars out just now. And then we can add effects in again as well. So we can, we can create those connectors and stuff if we want to. 
we'll just show you here on this animation so if we hit play on that what you will see is the goalkeeper's dynamics if we play the pass to him okay so that ball's not gone to him but you can see the difference in the dynamics what i'll do is we'll set up a little passing bit where the goalkeeper is going to get it um, so if we come out of there, we'll go into our tools and where's so our goalkeeper's number one. Let's get us to the end. Yep. So we'll put a new frame in. Let's ping the ball nice and long to the goalkeeper. Yeah, let's do it a long pass. Why not? We'll have a little bit of a demonstration how that looks on the screen. And then we'll do a little short pass into him. Add that in, and then we'll do another one straight into the goalkeeper, and we'll see if we can sort of demonstrate how this works. Let's just check. Yeah, that's all fine. Back into our 3D model. Let's go to animate, and we'll run through quickly. Yep, normally because it's not gone to his feet, it's not demonstrating, but we'll ping this long ball across the top now, so you can see the lofted pass. There we go. Yeah, there you go. So when the go ball goes to the goalkeeper, it will go to his hands every time. Um, so just bear that in mind. If you're trying to demonstrate a passing drill, uh, just bear in mind that the goalkeeper will pick it up every time. But what you can do is if you come out of there and go back into your tools, you can change uh, your settings, if you remember. So we'll go into the team settings, go into our squad, and we can change our goalkeeper to a centre-back. Now what you will find is I've just done that on the last animation. So if we go back to the first animation and then we change the goalkeeper, that might make a difference. Sometimes it's just about a little bit of playing around and stuff with it. It might not change it because we've already started yet. It's not going to update it, um, but that's fine. What we can do in here as well is we can click on our players to get a little bit more detail. We can go into a little bird's eye view there as well if we want. So we can see there, we can look around and stuff as well if you want. Um, that's me controlling the screen. So you can sort of see, you can you could maybe show players where they should be looking and uh, throw little bits in there and stuff as well. So it's a great little tool to use. And we've got a little tactics board at the top as well that we can do a little bit of work on there. Um, and that is it. A fantastic tool. Loads and loads of resources in there. Um, absolutely download it. If you've got any more questions, fire them our way and we will do our best to help you out and guide you on the way. If you like this tutorial, please give us a subscribe and support us. Um, good luck.